Wembley. Black who's going to go for it. Black for the one point to win the grand final. Hello, good evening, and welcome once again to the Facts of Life, your Halifax Rugby League podcast. My name's Rick Farrell, and I'm joined once again in the secret location by the ever-dependable, the ever-present, Mike Yeag. How are you, Mike? Howdy doody. Good evening, my friend. And thank you all for listening once again. I hope you're all well out there in internet land. It's been a few weeks since we've been on the air. I think we went into hiding a bit after the, uh, <laughs> the Good Friday game, but we're back. There's another Derby week on the horizon. Another hour rugby league debate, and without further ado, let's get into it. So, Mike, every time we uh, planned to do a show, it seemed to be that fresh news was coming out every day, and then we delayed it for a bit, and and it was inevitable that it was going to take a while to get back on the air. But we're back, and it's great to be back in it. Oh, of course, yeah, we've got lots to talk about, haven't we? No, that's it. We've got plenty of. Uh, Plenty of Halifax-based debate for you tonight. Where, where do we start? I think there's only one place to start, and it's probably the issue that's divided the most uh, supporters that I've seen in recent times. Um, the departure of the Wizard, the Maverick leader, mm-hmm. Richard Marshall, uh, terminated by com- mutual consent, we understand, um, yeah. following a disappointing um, start to the season. Um, what, what do you think about this, Mike? Good decision, bad decision? Where do you stand? I don't know if we if we kind of take the attitude back to um, the 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 Black Friday in question, shall we say? Black. <laughs> um, it, it, it certainly came as a shock. Uh, it, it, it's a weird one though, because like I don't think I, th- I think most people knew that it it, it was going to go sometime. Yeah. I think most people expected it at the end of the season. No one really expected a him to go. Th- 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 there and then, but also the way it was kind of uh, done as well. It was very, yeah. I very think the handling of it was was uh, something that needs to be looked yeah. at. To it? say to say that it, w- it was supposed to be uh, from the Q and A session with Dave Grayson and and, and the board. And then I think it was about two hours notice where it was cancelled, and then I think people started to put two and two together. Then, and then it just it just transpired from there. Sad times, as I say, whether whether it's a good or bad decision, that's by the by. Really, it's just sad that someone as like like Marshall and all the work he's done for the club, yeah, uh, is is gone. It's just incredibly sad, really. Yeah, I think I think it it stands out to me as a as a purely it's a business decision, isn't it? You yeah. Know, yeah. Uh, he was on a big contract. I, I understand one of the highest paid coaches in the division. Mm. Um, but you get what you pay for yeah, as well. Oh, absolutely. And, and what he's delivered, um, you know, is without question at this stage. You know, hindsight's always great to look back. And, and during the harrowing days when we didn't make the four under Marshall, we thought that we'd never see the glory days no, again. No. But, I mean, the man did absolute wonders on a small budget. And it looks like the board now, with our budget lowering due to the Super League vote... Um, that they're, they're trying to plan ahead and, and you know, it's it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. The good thing is that they've 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 acted now, they've lo- not let it go in any longer yeah, yeah. and they've given somebody else a chance to come in and prove that they, they can cut the mustard at that level. But obviously it's a bad thing because of, you know, the the standing that he has within the game um, and, and obviously his reputation around Halifax as a town is, I mean, he's a... Uh, He's never shied away from fronting up good or bad results. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I, I managed to have a quick chat with him on the day it happened and, you know, he said he were, he were gutted, but I just I just thanked him more than anything for he's left our club in a better place exactly. than he found it. And if every person involved with Halifax did the same thing, it wouldn't be too long before we were uh, back up the top ends fighting for silverware again. So, yeah, it's it's sad times, like you say, but um, I, I'll ask you then, what, what do you think went wrong as a whole? It's a million dollar question, isn't it? Um, personally speaking, I think that um, I, I th- it's a brutal turn to use, but losing the dressing room, I don't, I don't think he lost the dressing room, but I think I think the way I've put it before is that the message that he wanted to put out there was by either being lost in translation, just wasn't being received, or wasn't being wanting to receive. Well, don't, really. don't forget, you can get too comfortable as well. In, of course in you can, yeah. And that, that was Marshall's squad, there's no question in yeah. that. A lot of the players were signed by his predecessor, but he made that group of players his own and, and put faith in them. So, mm. yeah, and in, and in most 
moulded he moulded the team spirit that, that we've seen for the last few years obviously yeah. the players do club together but I think Marshall is a big uh, help with that um, it's, 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 it's a tricky one really I'd say we, I, I went to Toulouse to kind of jump jump forward and but we've all seen the performances that we put in this season it, it seems very much, much not a Richard Marshall type performance yeah. really and um, we just it was it was in danger of history repeating itself too often too often and yeah he's he's it's, it's, it's just an absolute shame but as you said before we shouldn't tarnish what he's actually done yeah for the club. absolutely i mean you mentioned that the history that marshall's size are notorious for being slow burners and, and having a slow start to the season but coming good yeah when it's uh when it matters always making it by sort of the skin of our teeth but making it nonetheless mm. um i think maybe the board I don't think financially we're in a position to to take the risks this time round, you know? No, I'm very, very surprised that they had the balls to do it, really. They had the balls to call in and, and, and make a change, whether it was mutual consent and remains to be seen, really. But um, some kind of change is needed. And, um, and well, they say a change is as good as a break, don't they? Of course it is, yeah. And, like, and, and Marshall's done the job fantastically in, in times gone by, but it's in times where the league wasn't as strong as it is now. And you've got, realistically, you've got... 10 teams trying to get into five places yeah. or not nine places if you count witness witness has done a, us a bit of a favor by self-imploding really with their financial affairs and getting points deducted than that and it, it kind of it, it makes a false read in the table really and if we were to carry on with those sort of performances we'd be cut adrift and by but i would i would argue we're in pretty much the same position now than we have been in every time we've made that you know we've never got into the four and stayed there for the whole season we've always sort of True. been low down and then sort of climbed as the time's gone by but there were nowhere near the amount of teams that, that there are now, oh absolutely really. and, I, and so. I was going to make the point as well that i think something that went against Marshall this year in particular was the failure to beat one of these top five rivals. Yeah, I don't think exactly, we yeah. I don't think we beat one until um, until we'll, we'll 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 mention his name moving on. Um, Simon Gricks yeah. became head coach in his first game we went and beat Sheffield so but at the same time it, it's it's a strange thing because Marshall I mean what a legacy to uh, to finish with the fact that um, we tried many times we've been in the qualifiers we've played many Super League teams and just before his time came to an end was the first time as a championship club that we're beating a Super League side. Yeah. So, you know, it's 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 just the way that it goes. It's very secular and it? it swings in roundabouts. But um, like you say, it won't tarnish his legacy. And, uh, no, and I, and I genuinely hope it doesn't really because it, the, the the good far outweighs the bad does Marshall. And speaking to, to fans of other clubs and, and the like, they, they say from the outside looking in, surely it was, it, 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 it earned a, a below par season. Well, it? it's funny be, as well because, I mean, a lot of the, um, the talk, I'm, I remember at the fans forum before the season started, there was a talk of certain players having credit for the performances that they put in in previous seasons. Yeah, yeah. So, it seems it seems strange that that was the philosophy from the coach, and yet it, the same wasn't shown from from the higher up. So, no, true. You know, it's a bit bit ironic, but but what can you do? Um, so yeah, that that um, ultimately brought Marshall's reign to an end. What we can't go further. He's, he's given us so many fantastic memories, so many great results. Uh, what are your what are your best memories of Richard Marshall well, as a coach? Well, first of all, is uh, is is chinos. That's that's one thing I've got to say. <laughs> His choice of chinos, the be best dressed uh, coach in, in in rugby league was the the unofficial tag he had for a while, and then he uh, he retired those to go for a more uh, darker pant, shall we say? <laughs> um, in in terms of uh, on on the pitch, um, th I think first of all, just say that the 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 brand of rugby that he got us playing. Especially after the, the the two three years of having um, Harrison's rugby force down our necks was it was a complete breath of fresh air. Absolutely, really. and it, it happened from the first game as yeah. well. I remember going to the whole KR friendly, which was uh, Jason Neverton's testimonial, mm. and you could see the difference overnight in players that that didn't particularly look like they wanted it wanted to be there at times the year before. They had yeah. a, they had a new lease of life. Funny, funny that the same things happen with a new coach. The same players seem to again have a new lease of life. As, as you said, there it's all cyclical, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, but in, t in terms of actual games, 
can't look past Bradford really. He's the he's the he's the man that stopped the rot, the the seventeen year rot. Um, stopped the rot and made them our beaches. Uh, yeah, the exactly. Yeah, and they say yeah, we had two bites of the cherry in twenty fifteen. We at the at Oddsall on Good Friday and at the Bash where we we all just lost, but um, that 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 game which which confirmed our place in the top four as well as beating Bradford was was just outstanding. And then as you say, we went five unbeaten against them. So any coach that does that against Bradford is is a, a near demigod in my eyes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, from from my point of view, there's, there's certain memories. I think we'll both have the last one. I'll save that for a while. What, one of my favourite memories is is a, a run of games that we had the first year of the of the eights, where I think we won ten games in a row to make the four. And and like you said, that the brand of rugby we were playing that first year with with a squad that he had pretty much inherited, maybe added a few loan signings of his sort of uh, persuasion to. But the rugby we were playing, we won all those games. That's when Tangata coincidentally became good. Yeah, he came to his own. Let's hope that happens again. Oh, we've signed Adam Tangata back as well. That's another thing that uh, <laughs> that we were sort of hinting about in the last it's, show. But you it's know. official now. It's official now. It, get, get it before it, it officially became announced the day after we did the last show. So <laughs> timing or what? But yeah, um, winning winning all those games in a row. Um, Fever Blackpool. Nilling, nilling a team. Oh yeah, thirty-seven nil. Yeah, on the big stage like that was uh, was fantastic. When we were so nervous before the game, yeah. the Bradford game away on Sky as well as you've mentioned mm. was was very special. Um, but the one more than anything that stands out for me was uh, to lose away oh, in twenty seventeen. Yeah. The uh, the famous uh, famous day that will live long in the memory of every person that was involved with the club at that time. Um, special memories. No one gave us a prayer. Yeah. There was a lot, a lot on the line for everyone involved, and and he masterminded what what will turn out to be something that will go down in uh, facts folklore. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll leave Richard Marshall for there for now, um, and we'll thank him for his efforts and and, and everything. But we'll yeah. we'll look to the future, which is what we've got to do in this day and age, and we'll uh, we'll talk about a whole one of our own becoming. He is uh, one of our own. Uh, now, I, from what I understand, they had a look for some stats. It's a long time since we've had a Halifax-born head coach. Mm. Um, what do you think of this appointment? On a, I know it's a caretaker base, but what do you yeah, think about it? Yeah, he's, he's, it's the natural successor, really. It's, there's not a lot of uh, coaches on the market at the moment, um, although we'll, we'll get to that in, 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 in a few moments' time. Uh, there's not a lot of coaches that you can go out and, and get. Um, but what what better than you can do? We, uh, we've, we were one of the, 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 the leading lights in getting a young British coach. When we, when we hired Marshall, first of all, what better than to have another young British coach, but even better from Halifax. He's one of our own. He's worked under Marshall for the past two years as a, uh, well, two, three years as a player and then assistant coach. He's obviously played under Marshall at Warrington as well. Um, but I think what might set Griggs apart from Marshall is A, because he's still playing now, is a much more modern coach. You'll know yeah. a lot more, kind of the more intensive and dark arts of the the modern game. But also as an Ifas lad as well, he he he, he bleeds blue and white, uh, and uh, he seems very strong minded. I think some of the uh, criticisms when he got named as caretaker, interim coach, whichever one you want to say, is that, oh, it's just going to be another Marshall. Well, I think the emotion was riding high at that time. Of course it was, yeah. And and, and to to be fair, I I don't blame people for thinking that way because it's it's the the master taking, the apprentice taking over the master sort of thing. But I think he's strong of minded and strong will to 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 make his own decision, and, and I'm guessing you'll know that as well in terms of being around the club as well. Yeah, I think um, it was inevitable; it was going to happen yeah. at some point. Like you say, it's the natural natural progression. I think I think from Marshall's point of view, he'd have liked it to have been at the end of the season, but that's just the way that the cards of uh, the, the chips have fallen, so to speak. Um, yeah, the the thing that Marshall benefited from as well was the fact that he'd had an apprenticeship under Tony Smith at Warrington. Exactly. Yeah, um, Simon Griggs also played under Tony oh, Smith at a long Warrington. time yeah the, and, and so that's um, something that's going to come come with time that he'll be able to pick up these tricks so he's had yeah. two top class coaches to work under now the, the one thing that you that you maybe overlooked is the fact that yeah he's still playing now but the type of player and the level of player that he's played at he's a great player oh, of course so some, yeah, of, the, some yeah. of the skills he has some of the some of the, the techniques I mean you're already seeing it in like we said earlier like a, a 
a change as good as a break and, and so forth. But you're seeing some of the things that Grixie himself did in a game day, sort of off the cuff, and mm. he's now able to pass that knowledge down to his own teammates and, yeah. and make it work on a Sunday. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, like you say, a young British coach, very respected. Um, if, if people are sort of rumouring that the reason that Marshall may, maybe lost his job was because he lost the dressing room, I think... You know, people might have had concerns about Grixie being one of the lads. I like think you yeah. mentioned that he's, he's strong-minded and and he's his own man and he's well respected enough to uh, to go in there. And and from the way that it looks like the results have turned on the pitch, I mean, he's unbeaten as a head coach uh, at Halifax. So um, yeah, it's it's perfect timing to give him give him a chance and show what he can do and prove that. Um, I mean, he's taught for ages that. He wants to, you know, he said in interviews before he wants to be a head coach at some point. Of course, I don't think he expects it to be so soon, though. I know. Well, <laughs> let's let's look at it this way as well. He got he got his first uh, head coach gig, and what did he do? He went out on, onto the transfer market, and who can he bring in? Oh, there's a player there I'm quite familiar with. What's his name? Scott. Oh, yeah, he's my brother. He also saved the club. Scott Griggs has just joined on a season on loan from Huddersfield. Yeah, uh, he's, he's not got much imagination, has he? <laughs> I've, I've got an assistant called Scott. And what's my name? My name's Griggs. I wonder if there's a player called Scott Griggs. Oh, there is, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, great to see him back. Um, I don't think he's been signed to be the first player on the team sheet every week. Um, I think, uh, he's, uh, even though he's played Super League and that, I think his legs are kind of going, really. But he'll be a very useful uh, player when he does play. I think he's been brought in the very same reason why Richie Marshall brought in Simon Griggs for that professionalism for that for that guy in the dressing room yeah. who knows how to get it done he he, he demands respect uh, not just from his brother from from everyone there he's been there he's done it he's played in world cups he's played in cup finals he's won cups and, and so on and so forth he's just a, a very very astute signing really um, who will do a job uh, whether that job is to support uh, Simon off the field in terms of coaching to, to help bring through the younger players the likes of Woodburn all who, who, yeah. who, who need that kind of tutelage really um, I, he will definitely do a job and I think it's very very astute as they've been brought and in I, I would assume as well that if he's going to do some help on the tactical side that those two being brothers have uh, a very similar philosophy of rugby league as well so that might be something that you know you can get your point across to someone. You're not going to be having wasting time with arguments about how you're going to approach things because you've both got a similar philosophy, being King Cross boys. Uh, of course, Big up yeah. the King Cross lads. <laughs> um, yeah, the question most people have been asking as well is, where are you going to play him? For me, I, I think he's got to play full-back. I think you move Q up yeah. into the halves. The, the thing about Q in the house was, you were seeing with players like Salty at centre, they were getting decent service at the right time and you're putting the ball in the hands of the wide men and, and letting them... And it whatever plays to his strengths, does QLT put well, him you, in the halves, If you half, put, really. look at it this way, you have Q in the halves, <laughs> and he's putting this perfect service over, and the guy catching the ball for the, to make the next decision is Scott Griggs. Yeah. That's that's a decent backline that you... You know, if you saw them playing for Toronto week in, week out, you wouldn't be too shocked no, about no. it, you know? So we, we've got an embarrassment of riches at the moment. Mm. Uh, young Chapman Smith needs to get a chance at some point, I would, yeah, I would true. hope. Um, and again, it, it makes it, his role even better when you've got the likes of Chapman Smith who, who's left a very, very well-run club in Leeds, a very professional-run club in Leeds, found himself at Halifax Stop where... <laughs> <laughs> found himself at Halifax where, um, with the greatest respect, don't have the resources that Leeds have and that sort of thing. He's a, he's a, a little thing fish in a big pond now he'll, he'll need that guidance there and who better to have that than the likes of QLT and Scott Griggs really yeah I think it's uh, it's, a, it's a good decision to to bring him in and, and as well you know a, a lot of people have been wondering will Simon take to the field again this year with him being a coach I hope so he's too good a player to Absolutely. be set on the sidelines I think um, obviously it'll make it harder to put himself in because if there's someone else that he feels can do the same job he'll obviously go for them he's, yeah. he's not the kind of guy that's that's doing it for the for the image or whatnot, but like you say, he's too good a player. But I think as well, those two they've spoke for for years about the desire to finish the career at least playing one game together in the blue yeah. and white. I would I would hope that Grixie would see the magnitude of certain games because over the second half, the back end of the last third of the season, we've got some massive games coming where we will yeah. need that guidance. Maybe you know as well, you you don't get the best sort of um, overview of a game. 
for the pitch as you would sat in a stand so maybe he feels like no well, there's nothing to stop him in full kick going and sitting at the top <laughs> of the stand for <laughs> half an hour and, uh, no no but he's, he's got the likes of Martin Gonzalez there who's more than willing and more, and more than capable of providing that, that bird's eye view so yeah absolutely I totally agree I mean I think they did that um when we had we had, we had another player coach that when we signed Scott Griggs on loan that old famous clip of him scoring the try that saved the club uh, yeah. at witness against York popped up and uh, Anthony Farrell was the player course. coach that day and who's on the sideline um, you know keeping it all together but Martin Gonzalez exactly. so good, good shout for that one uh, definitely um, I tell you what we'll move on from coaches and signings and whatnot let's talk about some rugby league let's talk about some games let's gloss over the reason why. I went into, uh, I wouldn't say meltdown, but I went into <laughs> hiding for a little while. Uh, Bradford Bulls on Good Friday. Ugh. Mike, how the hell did we lose that game? No. Can you explain it to me? Uh, no, I can, I can explain many conspiracy theories, <laughs> but um, I still can't explain how we did lost Did man walk game. on the moon? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> and I can say that with with definite certainty. Is the earth flat? How many more of these oh, have I Oh, God knows. Area, Area 51, 9-11 inside job, whatever you want to say. The RFL buying Bradford. Yeah. And, uh, well, and, and anyway. This, this, this could well be an inside job because <laughs> Bradford just did not have any right to win that game. Halifax that's lost that game Bradford didn't win it and it was it, again it, 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 we said on these podcasts of, of his, his father time catching up to morale in terms of his legs and so on and so forth if ever a, a game we needed Scott Morrell to be playing it was that game yeah. because as good as Woodburn all and White were playing that, that day and they did play well there's no getting around it we just needed a good old head just to calm it down, kick to touch, not get too giddy about it because that's exactly what happened. And when you've got a team coached by John Keir with players who are decent players, uh, they say they're no, there's no superstars in there, yeah. uh, but they are decent players who will do their job and make very little mistakes. If you give them that opportunity to get back in a game, get a roll on, well, they'll take the, the it. The thing as well, we failed to spot the danger in terms of them getting on a roll. The week before against Featherstone, they were dead and buried. They came yeah. back. You know, they, they had a habit of doing it. Things like that, winning becomes a habit, so we should have spotted course, the danger. Yeah. So we're attributing Bradford to game management. I, I thought we played fantastically well. I mean, mm. the try that stood out for me when Sharpie went through, I thought, this is it, we're going to win exactly. it at Canton now. But, yeah. Um, that that was obviously still during Richard Marshall's time, the, mm. the back end of the maybe some doom and gloom or maybe we just switched off when at a crucial time and like you say with Merrill on the field we don't do that so that was no. hard to take so that was the the Bulls result and, and we, we took a load there and um, and it was a fantastic crowd and, and great effort by the club and everything but it just didn't didn't happen for us on that day no. so after after the Good Friday um, I was uh, crucified <laughs> you went to Toulouse uh, for the Monday game didn't you I, I came out of hiding after that one um, there was no there was no resurrection on uh, Easter Monday yeah that's it, for was, sure. it was uh, it was painful viewing I can't imagine what it was like uh, do you want to give us a synopsis of what, what it was like being at the game uh, we scored a try <laughs> we, scored, we scored a try no, a decent try yeah, it, was, it was a decent try but I think to kind of temper it really because you said before emotions do run high and that sort of thing Toulouse were white hot and every single thing that they did came off jo Jonathan Thorne and Corella had the game on their little fingers and it was just it was painful watching but they were, it, you've just got to appreciate really good rugby league when you see it and uh, the, the the weather like it was the, the the way that Toulouse turned up and the way that we were probably a little bit tired and jaded after investing a lot of emotional energy on, on Friday and, and travelling and the over. travel yeah the back I the say, travel to, Toulouse had to travel but they travelled over to their own home and their own swimming pool yeah and stuff. there were we different had, French teams in France are a different kettle of they fish. are yeah they say, we mentioned the Toulouse game that we won to get into to effectively get us into the playoffs, that was a that was a one off. It was it was very strange how we actually won that game, but we did. And Ford weren't playing that game, and that could be that that was a big loss. Yeah, you look at the fact as well that Toulouse in France beat Toronto this year, the only team to beat. Them, they did, so. yeah, but also on Good Friday they got a hammering at Sheffield as well, so they were hurting and they wanted to put the record straight. And by God, they did. Was there any any standout performances, or was it just one of those we were caught a bit cold? We are caught cold. Certain players just tried their heart out. Steve Tyra tried their heart, his heart out. Sean Robinson did. Brandon Moore. The, 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 the usual suspects are players who will put everything into the shirt with there. It's just that, and, and that's the reason why I made 
made the comment that the whether the, the the message that Marsha was putting out was either being lost in translation or didn't want to be received. We just looked lost. There was no lack of effort in there, which certain people on social media were quick to to say that we, there, there were no effort and we were spineless and so on and so forth. The the effort was there. It was just a combination of Toulouse being white hot and just being really really good, and us just coming to the end of the road really. And as I say, it, it just in, we, I know hindsight's a wonderful thing, but looking back, he just kind of thought, well, is this where is this the end for Marshall really? Because where where does it go from here? Because the players did did look lost really. They were good at the end of the game, then they, 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 they were absolutely shattered and that sort of thing. They they tried the best, but we just came up against an absolutely amazing Toulouse team. Yeah, but, we're playing a tough hand, weren't we? I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the second Easter Monday in a row that we've travelled to France, you know. Right, yeah. So that, I mean, for, for a part-time team, that is, that's hard going as it is and playing two games in four days. And like you say, the emotion of losing the Bradford game, you could see how gutted they were. And I mean, Bobby Fairbank were, were, were inconsolable, you know. It was it was hard to take, and you can you can never get yourself. They, they always say you want to get back on the horse and play as quick course, as possible. Yeah, but, yeah. but when it's the game is to lose away, and it's and it's hard, and you've got injuries, and your your main playmakers out, and your captains out, and you know, and you and your other senior players are out, and it, it's just it's not a recipe for uh, for a win. You know, it's not a winning formula, is it? So yeah, no. it's, it's sad to see that Richard Marshall's legacy. Hopefully, won't be spoiled by his final result. But um, yeah, that the way that it, it was perceived over here in England, it, it was pretty hard to take. So, mm. um, so that obviously led to a change at the top. And I said after the Toulouse game. Now you do this on your radio show, Talking Facts Phoenix FM, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, make you, sure you, you check it out. You, you, you've plugged it. You've plugged it without you even saying it. Oh. Tuesdays at seven. <laughs> check it out, Michael on the mic. He Real. made a Phoenix uh, FM. And when he uh, when he got a prediction about the London Cup game, right, it was oh, everywhere, yes. every show. So I'm going to put it out there. I predicted. I said after the Toulouse game, it'd just be like just like facts. You did to go to Sheffield and win on Sunday because that's just what we do. We take the hardest possible route. What happens? We made a change at the top. We went there. We looked a completely different side, Mike. Yeah, we did. Very much so. Very much so. Um, it would be pretty much chalk and cheese. Helped by Chester Butler coming back. You know, yeah, say, and Scott Morell returning yeah. to the he did, starting yeah, line. Well. Say, there's always going to be a bounce back when a new coach comes in. Whether it's something that's been planned, whether it's something that Simon Griggs thrown into it with less than 48 hours notice really with a squad which he didn't pick either <laughs> again it just shows how staffed it was the squad comes out and the day after the coach is sacked so anyway we, 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 we've left that there yeah um, it was just a great performance and, and we've not got the greatest history in Sheffield they are one of our bogey teams really we played last year and it was a complete one off really where the sun was shining QLT was on fire uh, I, I didn't see us winning this game I, I, I'm, I'm I must admit, and as I say, Rick, I am... Oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> I, I, am, I am very, very honest and very forthcoming when I get a prediction <laughs> right. I am equally forthcoming when I get a prediction wrong, and I didn't see that win coming. Alas, we did win, and it was a fantastic win. Streamed on our league as well, so yeah. it, was, it was where a lot of people did see it. Um, yeah, no one's seen the highlights of it since. No, but, exactly, know, but, we, we we, but it was a very tough win because Sheffield have been doing really well this year. The very tough side to beat. Yeah, they were two for two over. over yeah. Easter. They always say about the, the game that gets you at Easter isn't the one on the Monday, but it's the one the following Sunday. Which is so. exactly why I didn't think we'd win because I think after the Bradford game, we invested so much. After the hammer, we took it to lose I just thought it'd be too much for it but in an orange shirts we went and we won yep that's the first time I think we've won I think it's the I think that was the first time we won the league game in orange shirts yeah so history uh, makers uh, history making team yes um, but yeah uh, great great win as I say so good to see Chester Butler back and it's like yeah. he'd never been away never he'd like you'd have thought you'd forgiven him to take a few games to get back into it and be a bit rusty and work himself out but no <laughs> He's just lacking. Just, he, he, he nah, played I, all year. I have to disagree. I think he's rubbish. I think any Super League scouts uh, listening yeah, should yeah. ignore. Chester Ball Everything just gets Michael has said. rubbish. I just want to. I, I want to touch on your point that you made about obviously you know the the way that things were done that the squad was picked by Richard Marshall and then handled by Simon Griggs. But the thing about facts is adversity 
brings us together. Of course and, it does. And those boys really went out there and and fought. And, and Grixie changed the game plan a bit, which is something that yeah, I didn't yeah, expect. Did. Especially with it being, you know, they've trained all week on one thing and, and, and he changed the way we played. Look, it was just a sheer... Guts or glory, determination. Definitely. There were lots victory. of bottle and heart showed and, and leadership that were shown there. So very pleasing result. And, and like you say, Sheffield have been flying high in the league and, and Tubbs, Mark Aston, their coach, came out and said that, that they underperformed on the day. But I think uh, they're not giving us the justice we deserve. I think we outplayed them, to be honest with you. Oh, of course. And Mark Aston's never going to give us any credit, is he, really? No, it's one of those things. But again, it just goes to show, we've said it more or less every show, this league this year is bonkers. Mm. If it weren't for league tables, how would you figure out, you know, Dewsbury go to Widnes and win. Widnes beat Halifax. Halifax beat Dewsbury. But then Dewsbury beat Featherstone. Featherstone beat Halifax. But then Halifax beat Lee. <laughs> Lee beat Featherstone. But then Toronto beat all of them. But then Toronto lose to Toulouse. And then Toulouse lose to... Exactly. It's crazy. Blah, 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 blah. Absolutely crazy. But Boo wants to put that on TV every week. Who <laughs> Although I can't say that because we're on telly this week. But, exactly. Uh, and we're on telly quite a lot. But we'll come to that in just a moment's time. Um... So the Sheffield game, Grixie got uh, off to a winning start. Uh, we then had our, his first home game, um, Barrow at the Shea. And this was, it was pretty much a, a foregone conclusion after the first 10 minutes, yeah. wasn't it? I mean, I mean, I felt really sorry for Barrow. They looked like the playing busted, the, the struggling for form, the, the fans didn't travel too well. They, they're doing it hard at the minute and, and we, we pretty much, I hate to say it, but we wiped the floor with them, really. We did. The score flattered them massively. We should have scored so many more oh, points, said, really. At least 70. Yeah. I, if, if, if it had been the facts of old and the facts that we, we, we know we should kind of be, really, um, we would have put at least 60, 70 on them. But you can only play what's in front of you and it is the poorest Barrow side I've seen, which is, which is a shame, really. But if anything, it's it's it better for us to, to kind of get settled in and, and yeah. nicer there. Um, for, for, for players to come back, for the likes of Ben White to to, to, to get himself there and, and, and play really well, which he did. Um, for, for the start, a new coach to come up with two from two, it's pretty pretty damn good, to be honest. And then following the Dewsbury win, we, uh, we drew Dewsbury in the cup mm. all the way on a Friday night, just the Friday just gone. Um, I made it three from three. A fantastic performance by the boys. They went over there, professional, and, and again, another game that we never looked like losing, really. No, yeah, and, it's a, and a game where it was a potential banana skin, really. Dewsbury have beaten Widness away. They've beaten Featherway yeah. as well. They've, they've knocked off some big teams, but... Yeah, don't forget as well, in cup games at uh, the Tetley Stadium, we've we've struggled uh, in yeah. recent times. So I, I remember they knocked us out of the Northern Rail a couple of times. So. They did, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it was a really good performance. I, I love a good Friday night game under mm. lights. Uh, it gives you a chance to to have a sing song and get yourself down for a jar or two. It's always a always a good <laughs> a good laugh. Over <laughs> no, not that fast fans need an excuse ah, for that, really. It. Although I will, I will say that it's a bit poor form not allowing the drum into the stadium. I thought that was a bit. Uh, no, a it's, bit it's, sad, it's a little bit strange. But I say Halifax fans are still singing very loud, and it was all, it was all good. Really. Yeah, it was it was a good turnout by the Fax fans, and uh, and a great performance on the pitch. And, and like we say, Grixie keeping his his hundred um, percent record. Very much we so. then, so we were through to our first quarter final in a long time. Yeah, since two thousand and two, seventeen years, mm. and. Um, who did we draw? But the old oh, four. Good old friends. Bradford Bulls. Cup friends. Well, let's up. I mean, the first time we beat Bradford after a long time was 17 years. You believe in sort of like, you know, parallels and... I like the number 17. Things like that. Yeah. That's the way, the way it goes, isn't it? But um, yeah, we drew, drew the Bulls in the next round of the Cup, which will be played on the 2nd of June, the Sunday. On BBC three, Two. Live on BBC Two. So facts get, get in the prime time. And it's a chance for... A championship team to make the semi final of the Challenge Cup which, for the first time. Which is the, the, the biggest news story of it. If we, t- if we take our fact specs off, really, it's, it's, it's great that two championship clubs have drawn each other because it means that there is a championship uh, presence in the in the semi final, which hopefully it will be a blue and white present and not a, a red, black, and amber. Here, here to that, absolutely. Um, yeah, funnily, funnily enough, we, we play Bradford this weekend. <laughs> At we the all Bradford at the moment. I know. Well, <laughs> we worked it out, didn't we? We were playing three times in five weeks: eighteenth of May, second of June, twenty third of June. Although we are we are happier than we were before we found out that. Um, well, we're happier now that we found out that the game at Oddsall is only a ten pound uh, a ticket. Yes, so, very much. And so. They're hoping to get ten thousand crowd in there. Mm. So I mean, any time I don't have to pay loads of money into Oddsall is a, is a bonus. So. 
Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's promising to be an exciting... Bradford Halifax games are always great fun. Yeah. The fans always get up for it. They love beating us as much as... You know, as as much as they were making out that Leeds was their cup final, if you'd seen oh, the Bulls fans after yeah. Good Friday, you you won't be disagreeing. You thought I mean, they won the my cup. My phone was red hot by, and I didn't even talk that much smack in the week leading up to it either. <laughs> what are you from the nineteen seventies? <laughs> we've been we've been winning. Uh, to, what talking smack, bro? <laughs> <laughs> well, what do the kids say, Mark? I, I don't know. No, you'll be, you'll be chatting them, them things. <laughs> them things, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's the style of talking, Bradford. Isn't it? Um, so we play Bradford, Summer Bash. <coughs> can't wait. Can't wait. You going, aren't you? Oh, can't, can't, genuinely can't wait. I think I think this has got the capability of being the best bash ever. I think it's with the the lineup that's there, with how how important the games are in terms of the league table and stuff, and the matchup of the teams. I, I just can't wait. I, th- I think I'm just proper excited. <laughs> yeah, I think well after this weekend, what we should know a lot more about where people are going to start uh, finishing. It should become more apparent, I think, as well. Uh, chance, Grich's first chance. Um, to get a win over the old enemy. Yep. Um, the best of enemies, I believe it's been. It's part two, isn't it? Of course Although it is, yeah. It's going to end up being a long Star Wars style sequel at this Friend rate, isn't it? Friends reunited, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's know. why I'm not a marketing man. I don't know about that one, Mike. <laughs> Stick to your day job, my friend. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, it's the first chance Scott Griggs is going to be up for selection. Um, I, I, I think it's a bit too early for, for Adam Tangata. <laughs> It's a shame, yeah. Shame, it's really. A shame, but um, yeah, we, we normally perform well. I'm a bit superstitious about. I've got this theory about Blackpool. We perform well depending on which stand we're in. Yes, I was just about to say the same thing because I think I think I've said this before on the podcast. So, so let's see. We had the um, 2011 Cup Final Lee North yeah. Stand, yep. lost. 2012 yep. South Stand, Fev Cup Final won. Yep. 2015 North Stand, Bradford Bulls, Summer Bash, lost. lost. 2016, South Stand, Fev Rovers, won, won. bash. 2017, Team. North Stand, Toulouse, Toulouse. Olympique, lost. lost. Yeah. So, where, which stand it's are time we to break the thing. We, we, we are in the North Stand, unfortunately. Um, we're going to break the cycle. We're going to break the streak, yes. We, it's we're, our year, Warrington style, it's our year. Definitely, uh, and, and, and I hope it is. I hope it's just a great day. I hope, I hope we, we do travel in numbers and, and, and get ourselves there because Bradford infamously travel in great numbers and everyone seems to love them at the moment. But I, I, do, I do hope Halifax fans do travel in numbers. And uh, from what from what I gather, we are kind of the being the neutrals' choice. So people who are, who are going over there for the weekend or st- stopping after the other games, I think they're choosing Halifax to... To support as well so anyone listening out in re- in, in internet land please come and support us <laughs> we love it we love it I'd, I'd tell you what the, the way I see this game going to be honest is I'm, I'm all for performance and I'm all for throwing the ball around and entertaining the cameras but the bottom line is the only thing that matters this weekend is the result. Is the win, yeah. Is win's the win's massively important because if, we, if we're not careful, given what the results could be at the weekend, we, we could find ourselves massively cut adrift. Really. Not bother about that. We cannot lose to Bradford no. twice, three times in a row. I will never hear the end of it. <laughs> You're not working, Bradford, rehab. <laughs> yeah, but I lived there during Bull Mania. I know what it's like, my friend. I know what it's like. Um yeah, it, it promises to be a fantastic weekend. I always love the summer bash. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get there myself this year. Um, Shame. But I will be um, hopefully catching up at some point on the on the TV. It's, it's just a great chance to, for uh, the championship to to showcase some of the. I mean, some of the games this year have just been unbelievable, they haven't have, they? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't understand why they don't put at least one game on every week, but that's a, a debate for another show. I'm mm. sure friend of the show, Matt Shaw, has had that debate on uh, <laughs> on the fantastic. i tell you what, if we're going to talk plugs, we, we gave a plug to the radio show. Oh, we haven't mentioned before that um, friend of the show, Matt, came on in previous um, editions. Um, his TV show, Rugby League Bat Chat, is back online and, and going very show. well. Uh, so if you get a chance to watch that on, it's, I think it's on Free Sports. And, it is. And it also gets uploaded to YouTube, so make sure you... Uh, you go and check uh, check that show. Out. That's a fantastic uh, show. He has some great guests, and they and they they get some great debate going. Of course, as yeah. well. Well, it's, it's it's positive times at the facts at the minute. It seems like uh, the you know we went from positivity at the end of last season to doom and gloom um, when we struggled at the beginning of this season. We seem to be getting some positivity back, which is which is always good, and that helps by the fact that it's not just the first team that are showing up and uh, and doing us proud, but we've also got the the women's team. Yes, top of the top of the league one. Yes, um, unbeaten in the league so far. I understand. Uh, obviously, 
tougher tests to come in the future. Mm. But um, and it was great as well to see. We had the the tour of Yorkshire leaving mm. for the Peace Hall, and the the women's game managed to get on telly. I felt sorry for the whole KR half, but they got <laughs> smashed on national TV. But what <laughs> can p- you do? P- picked a moment, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean. You see some of the highlights that come out of some of these games, some of the yeah. tries, some of the big hits, some of the plates. It's fantastic. So if you get a chance to to go watch the ladies, I mean, it was great to see them down the share the other week um, mm. as a curtain raiser, like like we've mentioned. Um, Mon may that continue. Definitely, where, yeah. As well, um, on, on the previous edition, rugby league wheelchair legend Jack Brown, God, <laughs> God, as far as the uh, the wheelchair community and, and rugby league community is concerned, um, currently unbeaten in the league, got off to a flyer. Mm. So. Um, Let's hope it keeps going really good. Definitely. Oh, I know. I'm here all week. And the reserves have started picking up some uh, some good results. I'm leaving that one. I'm leaving this one. I should disable your... <laughs> yeah, we might get demonetized on YouTube for that one. <laughs> Polluting the youth of today's mind. Uh, yeah, the reserves have been coming out with some uh, some brilliant results as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. They've had some good results. Um, great to see that. That that's still going strong. Have you been, been definitely been get, got getting to any of the games? Or Unfortunately, not. No, I went to a few, a few of the the early season ones, but I've not managed to get down um, for for the ones that have been down the share the last few weeks. But no, it's great to see the the the, uh, the the youngsters putting their hand up and putting performances in to make Simon Greek stink a little bit. Really, um, I, I, I I just really really hope, from a selfish point of view, that uh, Jacob Smiley gets his chance. Well, I was, I was team. Just you took the word right out of my mouth. He scored another wonder try. The really? boys got. Talent and and it's funny he inspired some of the key flewingers. Did you see the key flewinger? I did. Scored yes. pretty much the exact same try <laughs> in a game. Yeah, it yeah. was it was amazing to see, really. But um, we've got to give massive credit um, again to Martin Gonzalez, yes. Stevie yes. Greenwood, so. Andy Ollier that does all the work at the club, mm. and obviously to the uh, the Fax Trust, Fax Trust for yes. doing the fundraising that they do. With a, we've, we're getting closer in the quiz as well. Just going off topic a bit, aren't we? Oh uh, yes, yes, we're getting closer. We're, we're, we're winning that soon. Although we're hoping that everyone goes to. Uh, Everyone goes to Toronto and uh, and we get a chance to come first. But you're going to Toronto as well. Aren't I'm, so I'm going to be there. I'm jealous. If, if you're in France, I'll, I'll gladly help out. We'll leave. We'll leave that one for now. I don't want to turn green. <laughs> um, but yeah, like like I said, there's, there's lo- seems to be loads of positivity around the place at the minute. Um, and another point, um, we're fortunate enough to do some fundraising the other week for Grey Media. We had a fundraising night um, up at um, Belgrave Club at Claremont. Uh, myself. I played a few tunes and uh, Scott Fletcher put on some fantastic entertainment and, yeah. and they had an auction and they raised just short two thousand pounds for the for the Fax Legend, which is it's a great effort that you know I mean Massive for those idea. that that don't know I mean I don't know where you've been hiding under a hole or not but um, Grey Media has unfortunately been taken ill had a heart attack in Australia mm. it's meant that he won't be able to work um, so the the fans of uh, of clubs in England and Australia have taken it upon themselves to help the great man out. The man that gave everyone so many fantastic memories at the Wembley win, mm. and, and hopefully our boys can do something similar this year for us. But uh, we're not, we're not gonna, we're just gonna whisper that for now, <laughs> case uh, But yeah, it was, it was a fantastic evening. Everyone there that walked away with a piece of rugby league memorabilia. I managed to get myself a, a program from the 1956 Challenge Cup final against wow. St. Helens. Um, as a nice, I, I was gonna, I, I was gonna keep it a secret, but I can say it on this because my granddad didn't know how to use a computer. It's for my granddad's birthday. <laughs> he um, he joined the army in 1955 after we lost to Warrington in the um, in oh, the Challenge yeah. Cup replay at Odsall, mm. and and he said uh, when we got there he couldn't get day release from the army, and he says it's one of those games he always wished he were there. So Aww. I said, oh, I've got your program. Oh, I'm thoughtful like that, man. I'm thoughtful <laughs> like that. You know. Uh, yeah, it was a fantastic night, and, and and loads of money were raised, and they had a collection at the at the club at the at the stadium as well, and, yeah, yeah. and they've had some raffles, so it's a great cause, and well done to Terry Bradley and all the yes, guys that are very well done. that are organising that, and and it's a fantastic gesture. It just shows. I hate I hate the word, I normally hate, it, but the rugby league family still lives strong. Oh, know? of course it does, yeah, and it's great that we can we're in a position to to help look after one of one of our own. Really, so he's an absolute legend of the club. He's he's great media, and hopefully he, he gets well soon. Absolutely, here. here to that one um speaking uh, talking about um creating legends and whatnot um we, we were talking about cups and and things of that nature before we've totally glossed over the fact that we've had the first draw for the 1985 cup yes which apparently was our best chance to get into wembley but that seems to be getting shorter by well. the day doesn't it um we've drawn sheffield eagles at home mm. although that use that term loosely yes because here's my question mike 
Where are we going to play it? At Siddle, at Ovi Park, at, at Brighouse. I've heard we lots of heard Odyssey, YMCA. I just hope we don't take it to Sheffield. I hope we actually keep it in Calderdale, shall we say. Yeah. Well, I was saying that, I wouldn't mind going to Keithley again when we had that London game over. They were great. They put on some great hospitality and, mm. and, uh, and they're, they're a fantastic family-run club, so to give some money. Mm. You know, I was saying that, like you said, taking it to a community club as well, being able to put some coffers in the in the local, maybe make it a local club day, who knows, and have, have all the proceeds going to uh, to the amateur clubs or something like that. Maybe it's an idea to work on. That's Very why I'm a idea. media man, thank you. <laughs> Very good idea. Mark it in, man. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's a funny one, isn't it? It's just it's It's a new cup competition that's been put in. At a time when notoriously the council always digs up the pitch, um, it looked like it needed some improvements this year. It was a bit a bit dry and struggling at certain points, but it got it got through the season for the football, and it'll obviously be re- relayed after the uh, the Barrow game. Um, there was whispers as well from the council um, talk of upgrades to the share. Have you heard about this? Yeah, we talking about that, this? That turn, that's turned for the books. The uh, the council, which is now run by Labour, which of those uh, people who are politically inclined um, might, to talk like and it. promise everything yeah. before an election? But it, 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 it does kind of it come in useful because when I, I when I lived in Brighouse with my, my parents' address, uh, I I did vote for a Labour candidate. I'm not I, I'm I don't tie myself to a political party at all. The only reason I voted for this guy is because he wanted to, to to sort out the Shea Stadium at the time. I'm going back a few years. It was when the East Stand was still a building site, but that's the only reason I want to do it. But he said that as a Labour candidate, he wanted to get that sorted. Now, hopefully, wheels will be in motion to try and get that sorted. But... Personally, it's I think it's papering over cracks. I think as long as the Shea Stadium is in council rule, uh, we, we are going to stagnate and stand still as a club, really. So it's, it's the one thing that's holding both us and FC Halifax Town back, really. Get it get it back in charge of the clubs that, that, that own it. And, and, and move There's only forward. one problem with that, though, Mike. The finances that it takes. Of course, yeah. But to firstly purchase the stadium, then to for its upkeep, the pitch. True, but there's plenty of money men in Halifax who I'm sure will be able to get round a table and get it sorted, but... But um, that's not for me to say, and, yeah. I don't, and I don't know them. But um, from friends of friends and people who are supposedly the know, there's there's people with very very deep pockets who are wanting to get involved with both clubs. But the council is the one thing that's holding them back. So hopefully the the, the council can get something. Sorted. It's definitely something that needs looking at. Isn't it? I mean, yeah, the yeah. one thing that won't go amiss is just to buy some big netting. Big blue netting, have the football's badge on one side and the rugby's on the other, and just wrap it round that annex because it is such an yeah, eyesore. Yeah, it's just the making the most of it because you go to grounds like they, they, in the not too distant past, we were used to absolutely uh, a, a laughing stock of Post Office Road or whatever stadium it's called this week. Um, hmm. But it's a, it's a fantastic ground now, is, is Fev. Batley, absolutely brilliant. And they, yeah. they, they make the most of what they've got. Um, Barrow as well. Barrow, very tired stadium, but they make the most of what, what they've got there um, and I'm sure there's other things as well but we just need to make the most of it and whenever we have these big events like the Toronto game brilliant what Joe and Amy did in terms of fan zone and stuff like that but the South Stand Bar was absolutely atrocious there were no there were no service there at all it was there, were, there, were, there weren't any extra staff there it was just painful yeah and slow. there seems to be a lot of issues at the minute I, I mean I, I'm hoping that because obviously the uh, the forum, the question and answer session was cancelled <laughs> after Richard Marshall's uh, departure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, uh, these things don't go away. I mean, the no. longer you leave them, the more they fester. So I hope if anyone from the club is listening, um, I, I'm, I'm I'm sure that you're on it. But um, we need another date for for a meeting because you know the longer things go unsaid, and we don't need a divide between the fans. Not at this time, you know. We need to all stick together. Sing from the same hymn sheet and uh, and cheer the boys on to uh, and and every team mm. facts related to victory. So uh, I tell you what, we'll move away from facts uh, f- for a moment. We've uh, we've got through through a decent amount there. Yeah. Uh, with, here's us thinking we had nothing to talk about, and then all of a sudden we do. <laughs> so anyway, um, you brought up the fact um, a maverick. The word maverick might be used um, a lot by certain people, but this guy certainly is a maverick. He's back in the game following his disgraceful. Uh, Behaviour, but I mean, I was going to say, do you give him a second chance? Probably his ninth chance. Rangi Chase back in yeah. the game, signed for Doncaster. Um, do you think he's, he's still got it? 
He's definitely got it at League One level. Yeah, he's he's the he's, he's still he's still got that step and that that maverick brain of his and that, and that sort of thing. And he, he will do damage there. Whether teams above will touch him with a ten foot barge pole remains to be seen. Really, I'm very surprised he's back in. Really, I thought that he would he'd do <coughs> he'd, he'd, he'd he'd go back home or play amateur level or whatever that might be. But and then say we, we we're a very accommodating sport as rugby league and we give people two, three, four chances like Zaka Ardy. Is yeah. as well, um, and, and if a, a, a fit, healthy Rangi Chase is unplayable at times, he's absolutely fantastic. Whether or not he can get back into a position of being like that, I don't know. I think the advantage of going to Doncaster is he's well out the spotlight. He's well. There's oh no, yeah. There's no. There's and he might put some bums on seats for the Donny fans. He might as well, do. You know? Yeah, he might do. But there's no. Uh, there's no TV coverage. There's very little media coverage there. There's no kind of big teams in that league. I would really. like to think that it gives them a better chance because they, they stream some uh, some League One games on yeah, the R League. Oh, so. they do. Yeah, but I think I think in, in in terms of looking at Rangi Chase, there's no like sky cameras and 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 the world's glare on him really when he just needs to get himself sorted. Really, he served his he served his doping ban. He's back doing it I think his biggest challenge is his, is his head really and yeah. hopefully um, he, he, he gets himself sorted and starts loving rugby again because for a while he, he seemed like after he came out and being really really honest about things about, yeah, about fair his battle him, with yeah. depression and stuff like that um, mirroring the, the, the work that Luke Campbell's been doing for years and years and years I thought he turned a corner there really but obviously he slipped a little bit. He's human after all, but yeah. I genuinely hope that he does um, find enjoyment in what he does, whether it is finding his level at League One and and, 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 pl- and playing rugby and finding that love again. Fair enough. But as I said, I don't think... I think it's time for, for kind of fully professional rugby league has gone really yeah I have to say I think his highlight reel is, is as good as anyone's, mm. but yeah, he might have had his, his day in the sun. But we wish him luck. Um and and Doncaster a decent club. It's only a few years ago that they were mm. fighting with us for a top uh, top four spot. So yeah, it's, it's um, we're wishing well. What else is going on in the world of rugby? In fact, we're going to make this point because we took some right flack for getting rid of Richard Marshall, didn't we? <laughs> we did, yes. In the, in the media, every, every podcast, every rugby league show was caning us for that decision without knowing anything about the ins and outs and the workings of Halifax. It, it, it you know, it got got my nose a little bit uh, to say it. Um, but we're not the only one that sacked a coach this year. We weren't the first. Um, Leon Price sacked from Workington. Very strange decision. Very Richard strange. Marshall leaves Halifax. Mm. And then we've also had Carl Forster sacked as the head coach of Rochdale. But the biggest one, um, David Ferner sacked at Leeds. So... Mm. You know, that, that's sort of taken the heat off uh, our decision a little bit, hasn't it? What do, what do you make to those uh, decisions, Mike? Um, I think Leon Price one's very, very strange. He, he's, he's done wonders with Workington. He very nearly got them up, and to be fair, he should have really got them up, really. Uh, and he were doing okay this, this, this year, really. Yeah. So the, the, the finances are tight up there in League One. He's still a, a tricky lead to get yeah. out of, really. Um, it just seems very, very strange to just get rid of a young British coach who's still learning his craft and has done really well up there um, it just seems very very strange decision um, Cal well, Foster um, uh, tricky with Rochdale again um, but is it, the results aren't that great whether it's the player coach dynamic that we've mentioned before which won't work I'm not too sure really but um, he's now back at Whitehaven now which is good I think he's got, gone back up to Whitehaven just to play which will be really good for him because he's quite young I think he's only just turned 30 yeah now, I, think. I don't even think he's that to be honest with you mm. um, and then Dave Ferner very, very tall. I think, uh, I think it's unfair. I think it's harsh on Ferner because I think the the, the problems at Leeds go much, much oh, further absolutely. and deeper than just the coach. Really, similar scenario to Marshall, where the players not getting his message. Did they? Is it? Is, 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 is well, the players good enough? I would. I would yeah, argue. I think the recruitment. But again, it goes back before Ferner in terms of recruitment. Absolutely, recruitment yeah. for Leeds for the last few years has been terrible because you think who's left and they've not really replaced him. And then they've gone out and bought some big names. And Bar Hurrell, Lulla here and, and um, Trent Merrin have been absolutely shocking, really. And 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 Conrad Hurrell has literally carried the team. Yeah. Bit, really. He's, he's big enough to carry the team. Um, he's well been their, their X-Factor player. And you've got the likes of, of, of Richie Myler, who have just been passengers, really. Um, 
it was Richard Agar's coming to coach at the moment and he's delivered the, the worst Leeds performance I've ever seen in my life on that, that, that cup, cup game. It's it's tricky, as I say. Leeds are big rivals, and they are they they they're an easy target of making jokes stuff. But they they are a massive team, and they're a big name in rugby league. And it's not great to see a big name like that. Well, I'm but, I'm going to disagree with you there because from from my point of view, a lot of those big clubs need a bit of perspective on what rugby league's oh, all about. Yeah, yeah. You know, teams like Wigan and Leeds that and, and Saints and Warrington that sit at the top and make all the decisions hmm. that that take money away from lower league clubs. Maybe maybe relegation for the Rhinos would, would be the best thing. They'd get a clear out. They'd, they'd realise what the hardcore fan base is. And like kind of what Bradford have done, really. There, there we go. Again, just took the point right out of my mouth. Man, so <laughs> stop it. Um, no, it's it's a strange one, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm surprised that that they sat him, but yeah, they they pour out the end. And, and 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 stuff's got to change. They need a bounce back because otherwise, they they, they 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 could go down because London are doing all right. Hashtag, and London, hashtag uh, relegate the rhinos yeah. is on. <laughs> hashtag Leeds in crisis and all that sort of stuff. But it's it's strange and because Leeds aren't usually a sacking a sacking club really, but they've they've sacked two big names in the space of a year and they've hardly won any games since then really, and all the money that they spent on making Headingley such a wonderful ground. That it is now could be hosting championship games next year you never know yeah it's a strange one isn't it but it's still a bit best ground at championship <laughs> then anyway. well, well, what is the best ground at championship then for me yep. Lee yeah yeah, true I can, I can, I can go for that pitches yeah. pitches like nothing I've ever seen before it's immaculate mm. anyway um, sticking with the point about, about coaches um, you mentioned probably the Carl Forster one maybe maybe the, the player coach thing did go against him a bit and mm. uh, and maybe that's got something to do with it they've, they've been struggling with you know with the squad they assembled might not be good enough for this league and whatnot. but you know he's a young coach I'm sure he'll bounce back the price one you said that was a strange one once you see who they've replaced him with it doesn't look that strange because you know they've replaced him with Chris Thorman who's uh, obviously left Huddersfield due to some... Uh, I don't want to get into that because uh, it's not for me to say, but you know he had, he had some issues, didn't he, off the field yeah, that, that did, led to yeah. him getting sacked. So seeing him... And, and he's obviously got something. I mean, he was were, he were caretaker coach of Huddersfield and, and he turned them around. So I think if if, so, if you're struggling and someone, a big name like that, comes um, available, then you've got you've got to really consider it you know mm. so that, that that i think maybe chris Thorman leaving others field and, and being cleared maybe forced work his hand a bit possibly it's like um, we said before there's very little few coaches on the market really uh, say so if people do want to start sacking coaches who do you replace them with and then when as soon as Thorman came on the market they were working to the fastest finger first yeah there's going to be a bit of america around isn't there at the minute as you said earlier, there is. So. yeah but anyway that's we don't want to finish on a... Let's finish on a positive story, because that's all Wait. a bit negative, talking about um, sacking coaches and people. <laughs> no, no one wants to see anyone lose a job. No, no, of course not. You know, um, positive this weekend, we could see um, a Super League record for attendances. Mm-hmm. As Although, if you ask me, it's poor timing. Um, so they know that Bradford were playing Halifax. <laughs> yeah. That's Bradford. Well, it's one of those things. We only get one one full day a, se- a season where we get to have it on. They've scheduled it. But, but anyway... Um, they reckon that Super League more popular, and we'll see. Um, Catalan will play out of the new Camp, mm-hmm. the home ground of Barcelona FC. So that that's something that we've never seen before. It's going to be a first. It's going to be a Super League record by all accounts uh, for the tickets they've sold. It's going to be yeah. the first time a Super League game, a game of rugby league, a, 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 a full-time professional game is going to be played in the country of Spain. Mm-hmm. Although, again, is it in Catalonia? Let's not get political. No. We, don't, we don't want to open a can of worms here, but um, <laughs> are, are you going to be watching um, in the bars of Blackpool? Are you looking forward to the game? I'm looking forward to the game. I've got it on record to watch it afterwards. I think it'll be a, a wonderful spectacle, really, and and fair play, Catalan, for, for, for putting it on because they're not they're not just sitting still and dying wondering. They've gone right. Let's let's try and fill the biggest stadium in Europe, and and it could be the start of something amazing. And like they, they, again, the doom and gloom is saying, oh, it's going to look absolutely terrible in in, in there. It's going to look half full. Well, half full. 
full is 50,000 people. Yeah, half full is still <laughs> double the record attendance for anything we've ever seen. Exactly, so. yeah. And it's, probably, and it's nearly as much that we're at Wembley for the actual cup final last year as well. But uh, And and if if the, the Catalan or Spanish public do, you do get taken away by it, I think it, it could be a fantastic uh, bre- breeding ground for, for rugby league there, really. And it, it get, again, it gets the world's eyes on it. Barcelona, everyone wants to watch anything to do with Barcelona, yeah. really. Oh, it cuts through, doesn't it? Yeah, it and really say, cuts and, through. And again, Catalan savvy marketing there. They're wearing a, a Barcelona style uh, top for the uh, shirt for the for the occasion. Um, I, I think it's, it's it's a really really good idea. Uh, I just wish it was on a different weekend because yeah. if it was, then I'd have been so tempted to get a very cheap flight out to Barcelona. Well, cheap. I, w- I would assume that the scheduling is to do with with the stadium itself. Obviously, they have to wait till the football season yeah, finishes. Of then, course. if they're going to redo their own pitch like we do at the Shea, then yeah. you know this is the weekend to play it. But see, the thing for me, you, you've you've hit the nail on the head there. You've said everything that really needs to be said. But the point for me is. It's a fantastic idea, but they must follow it up in future. There's no point course, having one yeah. and then never doing it again or never, you know, attempting to take anything there of any kind. You've you've got to use it as a strategy to follow on. Look at look at when England played New Zealand in Denver. Yeah. Where's where's daft. the follow up? Uh, yeah. Didn't Warrington play Wigan in Cincinnati or Minnesota or somewhere yeah, like that? Yeah, they did, yeah. You know, you've got to follow it up. Mm. There's no point if you're not gonna if you're not gonna follow it up. Yeah, but. and if it is successful, that's where you got to follow it up. If it isn't, and I don't think the Denver test was successful, that's probably why I didn't follow it up. I don't think it was. I believe it was a business um, error. Yeah. And on it, behalf of the RFL, but um, yeah, well, when have you ever heard that before? Yeah, exactly. Um, but if, if, if say they do get fifty thousand people there, that is. It, 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 there's, there's Premier League football clubs that would love to have that on a regular season game. Hopefully, Catalan will strike while the iron's hot and, and, and try and build that relationship. Yeah, I think I think the most important thing is the win as well Yeah, uh, against a, a team like Wigan because obviously um, you'll be able to, I don't know what sort of promotion they've been doing in France for the game, but you'll be able to sort of use their past history being one of the biggest clubs in the game, probably probably the biggest club in the game. Yeah, and, and, and uh, when it, whenever Catalan do play Wigan at home, it's always the, the, the highest attendance of yeah. the year. So they're kind of giving up that, that, that full... Uh, uh, Stadio Berbuta Stadium um, for that for that winning game to take it to Barcelona, which granted is not all that far away from Perpignan, but it's in a different country. Let, nonetheless, well, um, it's, it's, it's I think it's great. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I know if, uh, I know a couple of Wigan fans that are going over there, and I'm massively jealous. But I just genuinely hope it is a great spectacle, and 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 we do move forward with it as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if they can get some some promotional stuff out of it and 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 take it further, it'll be. Uh, be fantastic really um yeah so that's like I say it has the potential to have the super league record crowd what we've also seen this this month this year um is a championship record crowd yeah, um, yeah. toronto um i believe was it swinton yes um record championship crowd so mm. so it seems like things the way they're going these big events expansion Oh, it's, 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 it's event culture. Again, it's all about following up. There's yeah. no point. You've got to be proactive, You've got to be relentless reactive. as well. You've got to be relentless. I mean, Jamie Gray at, at Fax 1 proves that you've got to be relentless. Yeah. Um, and let's hope that Fax carry on being relentless. Speaking of relentless, yes. It's on still, the field. Still, still winning all the games. Simon, uh, Simon Griggs undefeated coach for the rest of the season. Let's have it. You heard it here first. The <laughs> prediction master is, is at it again. He strikes again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mike, thanks for uh, coming and joining us You're once very again. Very welcome. And enjoy Blackpool, everyone. Get over there, make some noise for us, and up the facts. Up Go the on, facts. Boys.